So I'm trying to look at it in a positive way and say, hey, this is practice for you to be more concise because you're just talking way too much. Just shorten it up a little bit each time, Jade. Yeah, you got this. My name is Jade. I am a Peace Corps volunteer currently serving in Cambodia. Um, sugar cane juice, man. Um, I have been here for almost exactly a year and I will be here for another 14, 15 more months. And this is basically my story of my experience applying to Peace Corps and kind of how Peace Corps dealt with my mental health and mental health history. Um, so long story short, I was medically not cleared for service because of my mental health. And after um, fighting an appeal, my appeal was granted and I was able to be accepted. First off, I want to say I am filming, as you can see, in my lovely mosquito net in my room. Um, there are going to be a lot of outside noises throughout this video. I am really sorry. I think this might be the best place for me to film this. I apologize for all the sound. You're going to hear motorbikes and kids screaming and people yelling and dogs barking and I don't know if you can hear that right there. That's my host mom with her mortar and pestle just banging away making some buklahong or something. So. Yes, I apologize for the outside sounds. <laughs> um, also, I have a lot of notes because this was a very long process and it happened a little over a year and a half ago, like most of it anyway, and so I need kind of a, a reminder to help me tell the story. I just want to say that this is my personal experience and you might be going through something, something similar or it might be very different for you. Um, but I will say that the main reason that I want to share my story is because I think that it's important to talk about the way that Peace Corps is addressing these kinds of issues and kind of bring more light to the problem, to the situation. And also I know when I was going through all of this last year, it was so helpful um, for me to read blogs and see other things online from people who have gone through similar things. I think the first time that I remember Peace Corps kind of being in the forefront of my mind was as a kid when I was watching Dirty Dancing and Baby had said that after high school she had planned to go to Peace Corps and I remember thinking that Baby was so cool and I thought you know I hope someday once I you know get my heart just smashed and I have to say goodbye to Swayze then I can can go do something as cool as Peace Corps because nobody's gonna put me in a corner. Throughout my undergrad degree I became very interested through one of my classes I think I was about 20 years old and I read a book from a RPCV and it was a memoir it was a memoir on his experience teaching English in China and so after that, I kind of thought, you know, that's something I'm gonna, I'm gonna do someday, but I didn't have specific plans until about a year after I had graduated with my undergrad. Um, so this was late 2015. I decided to um, go to Portland State University to get my master's in TESOL, teaching English to speakers of other languages. And the reason I chose Portland State is because it was one of the only universities that offered this program that was approved through the PCMI program of Peace Corps, which stands for Peace Corps Masters International. And so instead of just finishing my degree in two years, it would kind of extend my degree all, all hot longer um, throughout my Peace Corps service and even after. So I decided against that because my classes were really hard and very stressful and I just wanted to get the darn thing over with and have a piece of paper so I could walk away and do something else. Because of that, I didn't actually start applying to Peace Corps until my second year of my program. Um, I applied in September for a departure date of August 17th, 2018. So it was almost um, a year difference between my like when I first started my application and departure date. So. The first application that you do is online, and I believe with that application you send in 
two reference letters and so that's what I had done and then you get your interview and your interview is normally over um, Skype and I remember I was interviewing with someone who was in Washington DC and it lasts about two hours it's a very long interview um, but I did well and after that about three weeks later I was um, quote unquote invited to serve so once you get um, invited to serve that means you do your legal clear you have to do your uh, legal clearance and your medical clearance and this is where the application is the most difficult I I believe <laughs> um, and it's it's difficult because there are a lot of things that you have to do there's a lot of paperwork a lot of appointments you have to go to a lot of time and money that you have to spend a lot of time the legal clearance is you know your fingerprints your background check um, I think your driving record all of that um, it costs me I believe between like 40 or 50 dollars I cannot remember the specifics I know that Peace Corps reimbursed you for some things but not everything on that one um, and then after the legal clearance and the passport and all of that, you do the medical clearance. So the first thing that you do with your medical clearance is the medical health history form. And this is online. It's very, very long. But the thing about the medical health history form is that it doesn't really give you a space to talk more about those experiences or why you're answering things the way that you are it's very much a sort of like yes no check the boxes type of form and so within that form it asks you about your mental health history and so just to kind of backtrack a little bit on that um, I have I feel like I've been um, kind of dealing with anxiety for most of my life it hasn't really been um, that much of a problem that I know of <laughs> until the last eight or nine years and it's been something that I have never had diagnosed during that time but I was always kind of grappling with it on my own and I did a lot of work on my own to learn how to better manage my anxiety and what that kind of looked like for me and so my first year in my program in the fall, uh, the counseling was included as a resource through my insurance at the school. So I decided, oh, this will be so neat. I will get to go see a counselor for the first time ever. Um, it's something I've always wanted to do. I think it's something that everyone should be able to do. And the next spring, so it was April of 2017, I was having a lot of anxiety. I was beginning to teach for the first time and that was really scary for me and so I went and I saw a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist in one appointment um, diagnosed me and in one less than one hour long appointment diagnosed me and prescribed me um, an anti-anxiety medication which is kind of what I went in for um, at that point I thought you know what this is something I've never tried maybe this is something that I need at this point in my life to help me kind of get through school and so I was prescribed um, sertraline, which is a very basic SSRI. It's very common. Um, it often goes by the name Zoloft. And I quickly went up from to, to 100 milligrams over like the period of two months or two or three, two and a half months maybe. Um, I was on sertraline basically from sep uh, September, April 2017 until October 2017. So if you can remember, October 2017 was after I sent in my application for, uh, for Peace Corps. And so this was right around the time I was applying. And in October, I had decided that I did not want to be on the medication anymore. I won't really go into detail on why I made that decision. Um, maybe I can talk about it in a different video but that is something that I felt was the best thing for me at that time. I went to this other psychiatrist and I told him, hey, I wanna be off of this medication. And so me and him worked together and we were very intentional about how we did it. We began titrating me down on this medication from October until February of the next year, February of 2018. We did it very, very slowly. We went down in increments of 25 milligrams per month and sometimes even less than that and every almost every single time I titrated down from dosages I 
met with him. I had an appointment with him and kind of talked with him about how I was feeling, um, how my body was kind of handling it, and how I was adjusting and all of that. So for the medical health history, I had to tell them this, and so because of that, I had to have a mental health evaluation included in my medical clearance. And that consisted of my psychiatrist um, having to fill out a lot of paperwork and which was that was a little bit difficult because I had switched psychiatrists so that was a whole nother bump in the road um, and he really didn't even know me until October um, so he had known me at this point when I had filled this out and when he had filled it out he had known me about two months and maybe seen me once or maybe twice throughout that two months regardless of that in his um, in the paperwork when it asked him you know how I was doing said that I was doing really well that I decided that I wanted to be off the medication and then that's what I was gonna do he talked about how we were doing it and the dates of, of kind of when I had planned to be off the medication by so that was that part of the medical clearance I also had to do um, a dental checkup um, I had to get my teeth cleaned I had to do x-rays I had to do a full gynecological exam um, and history you know for all of that I had to get a pap smear during that appointment as well um, I had to give them my full immunization and vaccination records for my entire life I my mom had I, she went through her entire closet and she found this tiny little book that they gave her at the hospital when I was first born and it was like tattered and worn with age and she had like written in 1990 you know like you know two months got this vaccination and it was so sweet and cute but that's the only place that those records lived <laughs> so I'm really glad that we found those so then I had to go to two different hospitals um, back and forth back and forth trying to find my other records from them <laughs> which that was fun um, and then I had to do a full physical exam and within the physical exam there is tons of paperwork and tons of tests that have to be done and I think I had to do between eight or nine different blood tests I couldn't just like get them all done in one day. It was this very long process of me kind of driving all over the city of Portland going to these different locations. There was this one test, oh, oh, I can't even remember what it was called, but there was this one test that was like the bane of my existence. I had to call all of these different places because no one would even administer this blood test to me. They were like, well, I don't know, you, you gotta call, you gotta call up. I'm sorry, that, that you are required if if you need glasses you have to have a current prescription and um, a current pair of glasses as well which I I had glasses but I didn't have a current prescription in those in and in, in a current pair of glasses in that prescription so I had to go and do that I had to buy new glasses and get a new prescription a portion of the medical clearance that is reimbursed by Peace Corps is 200 is up to $237 and 12 of that is for the eye exam yeah, a whopping $12. I just want to make a point here to say that I was very privileged and lucky in the fact that at this time I was on Medicaid through the state of Oregon and so everything that I had to do for this was all covered and that's not to say that I didn't have to spend money on gas you know getting all over the city and it's not to say that I didn't have to spend money in the sense of like I am taking time away from other things that I could be doing other work that I could be doing to do this um, but I do know that there are people out there that spend thousands of dollars on this medical clearance just to get denied for something similarly to what I got denied for. Okay, so I, you know, went through all this paperwork for a few months and by the end of January 2018, uh, beginning of February, I received an email from the nurse assigned to my case. So how it works is once you get, um, invited and you're able to kind of go through your medical clearance and start completing the medical clearance tasks you get a nurse assigned to your case specifically and this nurse does not have any supposedly I don't know um, what I'm told is they don't have any power in the sense of you know making decisions on whether you get accepted or not but what they really are is more of a middleman between you and the board of psychologists and nurses that has that power and so she emailed me and she basically said I just want to let you know that your account has been flagged um, because of your health mental health history 
I, I want to say that you probably will not get approved, but um, we don't know that for sure yet. And then she asked me, because I had been a little unclear in my, mens in my health history form, she asked me, when did you stop seeing your counselor? So this is now February of 2018, right? So I had told her I stopped seeing her in June of 2017. And I said, but my counselor actually just reached out to me and emailed me this week. And she asked if I would like to come in and see her again because she just wanted to check up and see how I'm doing. And if I wanted to continue sessions, I could. So I, I have an appointment to go see her next week. So then right after that, the nurse called me. And this phone conversation, it started with kind of a tone of like her being very um, upfront with me, kind of no nonsense. Um, but it was still kind of this tone of like, hey, I'm really sorry. I just am trying to be straight with you, but I will help you through this process. But then I felt like as the phone conversation kind of went on, it quickly turned to more of a, an accusatory tone and more of a tone of, of convincing me to kind of handle the situation in a, in a certain way. And I'll kind of explain what I mean by that. So, so the nurse um, first off kind of warned me that because of my experience with counseling and because of my switch in my medication, my stopping of the medication showed that I was unstable and that I wasn't kind of consistent over a long period of time. And she said because I had been talking to a counselor and because I had sought the medication within the last year, it showed that I'm unable to support myself. And she made a point to say that because I can't support myself, and I need outside supports, that means that Peace Corps can not accept me. And she was very, very clear about that. You know, you will not receive this support, most likely, therefore we cannot accept you. I also said, well, I haven't seen my counselor since June of 2017. So remember at this point, it's February 2018. And she said, well, actually I have it in writing that you plan to go see her next week. She said, if you cancel your session to go see her next week just because you want to look better to us, that's going to be a problem because we have in writing that you had already planned that and it's more about like your need for it and so that shows that you do need it and so therefore we can use that against you. And I remember at that point, um, I was, I was on campus, I was between classes, it was really cold outside, there was people everywhere. I was trying to like maintain this composure of like what a stable person should be <laughs> so that, you know, I, I didn't want anything to be used against me basically. And, and she was already using things that I had said against me and I felt very much like I was in kind of a, uh, an investigation and I had done something wrong and they were trying to find all this evidence you know, and I, I really wanted to kind of almost invoke my Miranda rights at that point. Um, it was very, it was a very interesting situation to have while applying for a job. She said that once I got denied that I could um, do an appeal. She highly discouraged me to appeal my case. She said that less than 10% of cases actually get approved and in my particular case she thinks that I would be even less than 10% but she did say that if I so chose to um, submit an appeal then she as the nurse assigned to my case would be my advocate through that process she would help me she would be there every step of the way a few weeks later, I think, in February, I actually did get denied my medical clearance. Let me read you a little bit of the letter of, that I received from Peace Corps from my, about my denial. I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, but I'll read the real good parts. So, please know that this decision was not made lightly. They said, the reasons for medical non-clearance at this time concern the recent resolution of symptoms and recent alterations in your medication regimen related to your mental health concerns. 
Our concern is the need to establish a significant period of time without alterations to your medication regimen and without symptom relapse. Given the individual concerns of your case, we recommend a period of one year passing on or off a consistent medication regimen and without active symptoms to demonstrate that concerns have appropriately resolved without further issue. So this is the part that really gets to me more than anything else in this denial. <laughs> it's this paragraph. Um, it is likely to a reasonable degree of medical certainty the potentially stressful environment of Peace Corps would aggravate exacerbate, accelerate, or permanently worsen your pre-existing medical concerns. Ice cream. So then at this point after I was denied, um, this was actually where my nurse was the most helpful to me that she had been throughout this entire process. So the nurse suggested to me um, that I actually freeze my case for two months and actually complete my appeal at that point. If I can do my appeal two months later, then it could I could say, hey, so these last two months I've been off my medication and this is how I've been doing. And I would be able to have um, another evaluation from my psychiatrist at that point, and that would also help my case. So at the beginning of March, I started submitting what I had built of my case to to the Peace Corps, and then at the end of April, um, a board of psychologists reviewed my, my appeal and then I had to wait a few weeks to get the answer from them. Ja? Uh, ja, ja, my blood. So in the interim between the time that I froze my case to the time that I submitted my appeal, there was actually a very interesting change of events. And so what ended up happening was my departure date for the part the departure date for Peace Corps Cambodia um, that year was supposed to be August 17th 2018 and it had been changed and been moved back to October 26 2018 and so what this actually meant for me um, in the realm of of my appeal process was that it looked good for me it gave me an extra two month cushion for me to say, okay, I stopped my medication in February and my departure date is in October. So that means that I will have been off my medication and kind of at a stable, non-changing state of mental health for longer than if I would have left in August. I firmly believe that if my departure date would not have changed, that I would, my appeal would not have been approved. I feel that I would have, I would not be in Cambodia right now, <laughs> and not be a year in, a year in of my service. My appeal. <laughs> so the thing about the appeal is that there is really no structure around it. It's really kind of whatever you think will build your case is what you submit to them. And the nurse during this time was not very helpful. I mean, she was prompt, she responded to me, she did the bare minimum of what she had to do. I did not feel at any point that she really was being my quote unquote advocate as she had claimed to me that she would be and was required to be. Um, but I think I did a pretty good job of Kind of figuring out the best way for me to build my case during that. Ja, ja, my blood. <laughs> so, what I ended up doing um, was I first thing I did was I wrote another personal statement, and let me tell you, <laughs> I actually did this during finals. I think or no dead week like the week before finals I believe so it was a lot and I didn't plan to spend that much time on it but I got so sucked in I got so sucked into making my case and kind of fighting for really what I felt was my right um, to to this position that it ended up being a very very a long um, statement so the one thing that I think really made my statement strong is that I specifically addressed every single point 
that um, I received in my denial from Peace Corps. And in doing that, I was able to kind of break down their argument and fight against each and everything that they said. So I broke it up into sections and each section um, addressed a different concern. And the first concern, it says addressing concerns of medication alteration. And in this section, I actually referenced um, NAMI, the National Association of Mental Illness, and I referenced the FDA. I wanted to show that I had been off of a, I had been on less than a therapeutic dose of sertraline since November of 2017. So I am able to, you know, care for myself without this support, right? And that I, that I um, am doing well, regardless of being on less than a therapeutic dose. So the next portion of my statement was addressing concerns of symptom relapse. And this was actually the part that was the hardest for me and the most frustrating was the fact that they were concerned about symptom relapse. Because for me, the symptoms that I experience and that I have experienced for many years, I do someday hopefully see those symptoms completely going away. That's the ideal. That's what I'm striving for. But I do not anticipate that happening anytime soon. And so for me, I don't believe, just on a, a personal fundamental level, I don't believe that the existence of these symptoms in my life necessarily means that I am incapable of completing a 27 months of service. And I can tell you after being in Peace Corps for a year, I can tell you that it is the hardest thing I have ever done. And I can tell you that, that, I, that there are ways that my anxiety was triggered that I could never have anticipated. But that being said, I can also say that just because my anxiety was triggered and because I have been dealing with these symptoms and because it's been really difficult doesn't mean that I am not able to serve. Addressing the management of symptoms. So they were concerned that I would not be able to manage my symptoms. So I actually did um, a two page, a page and a half table. I did a table for the tools that I use for managing my anxiety. So um, I split it up into spiritual, intellectual, emotional, and physical tools and gave them examples of things that I already do and I have been doing for years. Wait. So hold on. And the second table was focused on the strategies that I use in the moment. So when I'm having a panic attack, when I'm feeling really overwhelmed and kind of overcome with anxiety, how in the moment do I manage it? Because stressful situations are bound to happen, right? So I had both of those for them. Next, um, addressing the likelihood of disruption of service. This was the other part that was kind of touchy for me and a little frustrating. Um, I wrote a lot there. <laughs> I basically said, um, kind of what I've already said here, I, I kind of talked about who I am as a person more um, and how I felt that in making this decision, the nurses and the psychologists didn't actually see me as a whole person. So the Peace Corps has it set up so that the medical team and the other parts of the application are completely separate. And the medical team makes these decisions based on only specific paperwork that they're given. And it has nothing to do with anything else I've already submitted through my application. And it's so I feel like these decisions are made in a vacuum and I feel like this is not something, if they say that they are not going to make these decisions lightly, I believe that these decisions should not be made in a vacuum as they are. Um, the psychologist did not look at my application. They did not look at my resume. They didn't look at um, my interview. And in anyone who would have seen those would know that I was overqualified for the position that I applied for. I had experience living abroad. I knew intellectually the requirement I don't think you can ever really know until you're here but intellectually I knew the requirements needed 
from a mental, emotional standpoint to be a Peace Corps volunteer. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? So them to make that decision independent of all of that other information, um, I think was very irresponsible on their end. In my appeal, I also submitted a letter from my counselor um, that would basically, that I had seen until I think March or April I had seen her. And so it was basically her saying, hey, Jade's been off medication for you know two months. This is how I kind of see her dealing with it. I had a letter from my psychiatrist again. I, I had a letter from one of my professors. And that was actually, I think, one of my strongest um, pieces of evidence as well. She is an amazing woman. I look up to her so much, but I actually was working under her during the time that I decided to go off my medication. And she, I was actually working very, very closely with her and she kind of had a firsthand experience of how I handled the titrating down of my medication. And in a, in a professional setting um, with students. I was teaching and during that time I was TAing for her. Um, and then another thing that was really great about her was that she actually deals with anxiety. And so she really made the case for me in saying that just because you have symptoms of anxiety, just because you have a change in your mental health does not mean that you're incapable. And then lastly, I got a letter from my, from the regional manager at the job that I was working the year before that. And the reason I think these two letters were important is because my letter from the professor showed my state um, at work in the professional setting during the time that I was getting off of my medication. And then the letter from my regional manager from the year before, this showed how I handled myself at work, around people, around friends during the time that I got on my medication. And so what I really wanted to do there was to show that whether I was getting on my medication or off my medication, I was still able to function. <laughs> I was still, you know, doing well in school. I was a, an amazing employee. Employee. So after I sent in my appeal, I waited about another month until I got news from my nurse. She had said that I was being conditionally cleared for service. This was happening in April, right? So then this meant that I was conditionally cleared until September and my departure date was in October. So this meant that at the end of the summer, I would have to submit another statement and get another evaluation from my psychiatrist basically saying that I was doing okay, that I hadn't, you know, gone crazy within the period of time that I'd been off my medication until then. So doing that one last thing was very annoying, to be honest, but I think the hard part about that was that I never felt confident that I was actually gonna get accepted throughout that time because I didn't really trust the Peace Corps medical team at this point. I finally got, uh, in mid-September, about a month before my departure date, I was accepted. And so it was a very, very long process. It was actually almost exactly a year from the time that I first applied until the time that I was accepted. I really felt like a child during this process. Um, I felt like I was being scolded. I felt like I didn't have the ability to, or the right really, to do what I thought was best for myself. And I felt like what I did think was best was being used against me. Really was scared to say anything wrong um, uh, to the nurse assigned to my case, to my psychiatrist. I was so nervous that one, one slip up, one, you know, talking about my symptoms and how I still had them, which to me isn't a problem, but apparently to Peace Corps it is. It was hard for me. I didn't want to lie, but I didn't believe that they should be able to to take that away from me because I have those symptoms. I, I kind of felt like I was being told that I was crazy and that I, all the things I thought that I could do, I can't do. And that was really hard as well. Well, the last thing that I wanna say in, in the other really big issue that I have with all of this stuff that I've already talked about is that because I was approved and I did begin Peace Corps Cambodia, I have kind of a frame of reference 
to compare my experience being in service to my application. And I believe, based on being here for a year, that the way that Peace Corps um, processes its applicants is very different from the way that they treat their volunteers. And what I mean by that is that, for example, the nurse assigned to my case told me that I would not have support, that I would not have a counselor, and that I might not be able to get medication if I needed it again. And what I saw in my own personal experience with Peace Corps Cambodia is that I was so supported from the very beginning. But just the way that the system is set up, I felt was very supportive in every way. Because um, I think that, you know, your mental health it kind of bleeds into all aspects of service, right? So training for, you know, learning the language and doing like technical training. Technical training, um, all of those other aspects of, of service. I think that your mental health kind of, kind of um, relates to all of those. And so I, what I noticed was that every aspect of my training up to this point, the staff have been adamant about being there for us and being supportive in, in an emotional way. Another thing is that in Peace Corps, there is always a counselor assigned to every country. That doesn't necessarily mean that the counselor lives in that country. So for example, the, the counselor for my region, li uh, she lives in Thailand, and I have been able to um, contact her via phone um, and have sessions over the phone that way. And so, and I understand that, you know, sometimes you don't have internet and some, some sites you might not have uh, easy access to a phone line. But um, in general, in Peace Corps Cambodia, that is something that you have and every single country has a counselor who is there specifically to help their volunteers. They shouldn't be saying that we won't get that support and we shouldn't be able to, to be volunteers because of that fact when it's, that's not, first of all, that's not even true. I've had to seek support from the counselor and from a psychiatrist since I have been here. It has been very difficult for me, but I had those supports available to me. That's why they are there. So here I am. It's been a year in. I am doing well. And, and guess what? I'm still having symptoms of anxiety. It's happening. It's happening all the time. <laughs> but I'm here and I'm doing it. And I don't think that Peace Force should be discriminating against applicants based on something like this. And I think that in the future, they should um, find a way to make these decisions when taking um, the entire person into account and not just um, a few check boxes and a small personal mental health statement. I hope that me sharing my experience was a little helpful for you. I'm sorry that you've been watching me move. Wave my arms around. For the last three hours. <laughs> Hopefully this video will be less than an hour when I edit it. We'll see. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, you can comment below or um, I'm going to put my email in the description as well and you can email me. Um, if you're going through a process similar and you'd like to maybe read my personal statement and kind of see what stuff I included in there, I would be more than happy to do that. Um, and if you are going through a process like this, I'm wishing you the best of luck. I really hope that you are able to appeal the decision and you're able to become a Peace Corps volunteer if it's something that you really wanna do. And I hope this can be helpful in some way for you. Um, so yes, I'm gonna go eat my noodles with my host family. I'm about to cry because I've been trying to film this video for hours and I'm finally done, I'm so excited. <laughs>